Let us now look into the interesting experiment which was carried out by T. W. Engelmann. This is one very important experiment and this experiment has led to an important development in our understanding regarding photosynthesis. Let us see inside this. But before that, we have to clear some other concepts. You all know what is the basic equation of photosynthesis and what are the basic elements which are essential for photosynthesis to occur. It is 6 molecules of CO2, 12 H2O. Then you all know what is the end product. The end product will be glucose. Oxygen and water, and this whole procedure will be done under sunlight. Okay, and you all know that in photosynthesis, light energy is transformed into chemical energy. Okay, here actually, light energy is transformed into chemical energy. And you also know what is the source of this light energy? That is obviously sunlight. Suppose this is our sun. Okay. And sun emits sunlight. This sunlight contains one package of electromagnetic wave. Okay. There is a package of electromagnetic wave. And in this package, there is X-ray, there is gamma ray, there is ultraviolet ray, there is visible light, infrared, microwave, radio wave. These all are included inside the sunlight, okay? But photosynthesis can be occurred only in visible light spectra okay only in this visible light spectra photosynthesis can be occurred these all the spectra the x x ray gamma ray ultraviolet ray these are dangerous for photosynthesis photosynthesis will not occur in these wavelengths okay these are dangerous for photosynthesis photosynthesis will occur only in the presence of visible light let us now discuss about some features of visible light okay let us now discuss about visible light visible light spectra the wavelength range of visible light spectra it is generally 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer so the mixture of the wavelengths in between 400 and 700 nanometer its color will be generally what will be its color its color will be white okay but this white light it has its spectral components okay it has its spectral components spectral color components if you split white light by prism you will know that one rainbow will be created and seven different types of, of color will be produced and each of those color have different different wavelengths so what are the seven colors you all know it is vip gear vib gy or this red color it has the wavelength of 650 to 700 nanometer this blue color for example has a wavelength of 450 to 500 nanometer okay T. W. Engelmann showed us the role of this different type of wavelengths and different type of colored lights in photosynthesis so what is the actually significance of T. W. Engelmann's experiments it shows us the role of different wavelengths of visible light in photosynthesis it will show us that in this different spectral components of white light 
in which spectral component or in which colored light photosynthesis will be higher, in which photosynthesis will be lower. This will be shown by Engelmann's experiment. Let us see directly what was actually the experiment by T. W. Engelmann. This is the setup which was used by T. W. Engelmann. First, he split it white light into its spectral components. Okay, this is white light. This is one prism. You know the function of the prism. Prism is specially designed. And if white light pass through it, then it will be simply split it into its spectral components. Okay, so these are the spectral components. This is, for example, violet. This is indigo. This is blue. This is green. This is yellow, orange, and red. So first step, Engelmann split a white light using one prism into its spectral components. That means this different type of colored lights were produced. After that, he simply illuminated one green alga. So this is the green alga, cladophora. He will illuminate this cladophora with this light spectra, this rainbow. Okay, and this cladophora is placed inside one suspension this is one aerobic bacterial suspension in this suspension there is a lot of aerobic bacteria okay there is a lot of aerobic bacteria so what are there aerobic bacteria what is this cladophora this cladophora is actually one reticulate filamentous green algae this is one reti filamentous green algae okay where this aerobic bacteria were used these aerobic bacteria were used to detect the site of oxygen evolution okay as these are aerobic so they have the requirement of oxygen for the respiration so simply they will move towards that place where oxygen is available. Now let us see what happens. After illuminating this cladophora with this spectral components of white light, what T. W. Engelmann observed? He observed that in that region where this blue light were incidented, okay, this blue light were incidented in this part. And this red light is incidented in this region of the cladophora. He observed that this aerobic bacteria were accumulated in this region, okay? In this region where red light was incidented and blue light was incidented. And in other areas, the accumulation was slower. In these two regions, accumulation of this aerobic bacteria were very much high. What it signifies? It signifies that in this area where red light is present or blue light is present, photosynthesis is occurring in its level base. That's why the evolution of oxygen is highest in this two region. And for that oxygen, these aerobic bacteria are accumulating around that region. What we come to know from this observation that this red light where this was incidented in that region the rate of photosynthesis by cladophora was very much high similarly also in this blue region that means we are getting an idea that red light and blue light has greater impact on photosynthesis and in the presence of red light and green light photosynthesis will be occurred in its peak level that's why here oxygen was producing in its peak level and those aerobic bacteria were accumulating around it okay so by this 
we are showing the action spectra of photosynthesis okay one first action spectra of photosynthesis was showed up by this angle mass experiment and this action spectra what is the action spectra actually this red light it has a wavelength of 650 to 700 nanometer and this blue light has a wavelength of 450 to 500 nanometer these are roughly similar to the action spectra of chlorophyll a and b so what it is clear it is right now clear that photosynthesis will be occurred highest in the presence of blue and red light among these two in whose presence photosynthesis will be occurred the best that is blue light okay this is one very important point that in presence of blue light photosynthesis will be occurred at its best and among these all colors photosynthesis will be occurred in its lowest rate that is in this region okay in this region no aerobic bacteria near about no aerobic bacteria will be present in this green light region so photosynthesis will be lowest in the presence of green light okay in green light it will be the lowest and in blue light it will be the highest in this zone in this green and yellow in this both zone their accumulation of aerobic bacteria will be fewer and here occurrence of photosynthesis will be very low subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Total net biology syllabus will be uploaded in this channel usually one by one.